Welcome to Wonderful Wonga Wednesday, where your brain is your free ride to the riches. I'm the Dosh Dazzler, Shazza Carpenter, the Cash Countess, and your Queen Elizabeth, of course. But let's talk the real Queen here, shall we? In what's got to be the most epic moment from London Fashion Week, Her Majesty made her debut at the catwalks. Yes, it's true, blending in like a regular fashionista, the Queen herself was spotted front row next to US Vogue editor Anna Wintour, and it was so odd. It was awesome. Now from a fashion week first to a last, Burberry's Christopher Bailey took his final bow to a standing ovation. After 17 years at the iconic brand, he is hanging up his stylish hat. He likely wants to dedicate time to the more meaningful stuff in life, like winning HQ trivia. And I don't blame him. So here's how to do so. I'm going to ask you a series of questions ranging from easy to hard. You've got 10 seconds to tap your answer. If you get it right, you move on, answer all 12, make the final cut, and you get a wad of designer dosh with the Queen's fashionable face all over it. Now, this ensemble will net you a very vogue $750. So are you ready to measure your smarts? Yeah, you are. Q1, what's the name of Apple's personal digital assistant? Surly, sorry, Siri. Surly, sorry, Siri. Apple's digital assistant. Now I'm not sorry that I get Surly with Siri. They all sound the same to her, so any of them will do. The word she will think you are saying is Siri. And that's her name. And I'm just happy that 18,525 of you understood the question. Now she can search the internet, set reminders for you, and misunderstand you so much, you just get up and do it yourself. Much easier. Q2, which of these is a dwarf planet? Jupiter, Earth, Pluto, a dwarf planet. Is it Jupiter, Earth, or Pluto? It was named after the Roman god of the underworld, but there's barely enough world here to hide anything under. It's teeny tiny. It's Pluto, of course. Pluto for the win, 17,358 of you are dwarfing the rest of the players here on Q2. Discovered in the 30s, Pluto was reclassified as a dwarf planet in 2006 and given the catchy new name of 134340. Can't forget that one. All right, guys, I see you all in the game. Shout out to some office teams playing today. We've got Thornbank Place, the KUTWK team in Glasgow. I take it that's not keeping up with the Kardashians. We've got the gang at Tartan Paint Supplies. What's up, Jim, David, and Bill? Hey. Bally Gifford in Edinburgh, Email Octopus, and the wonderful team at Wiggle. Good luck to all of you office teams and you solo players as well. Q3, which of these US states contains the name of another US state? Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas. Which US state has the other or another US state within the name? What do you think? Dorothy was right. There is no place like home except that place that basically is spelt the same way, keeping Kansas close. It's Arkansas, of course. 12,152 of you are tapping your ruby slippers to move on to the next round. The two states sound different because they were named in different languages. Think aluminium and that silly US word for it. Aluminum there, I said it. Who's ready for Q4? Which of these shapes has the most sides? Pentagon, heptagon, hexagon. Pentagon, heptagon, hexagon has the most sides. Which side are you on? It's hard to tell whose side the pentagon is on, but the shape has five sides from the Greek for seven, however. It's heptagon. We were looking for 10,000, and 84 of you are on the winning side, and a pyragon looks like a perfect circle, but it actually has an infinite amount of sides. It's a 2D shape. If you don't believe me, feel free to count those sides. You'll be there for a while. Q5, which of these French actresses has never been nominated for an Oscar? Marianne Cotillard, Eva Green, Emmanuel River, French actresses never nominated for an Oscar. 
She may sound like a Cluedo character, but if the crime was committed with an Oscar, it wasn't her. Eva Green is your answer. 4,110 of you tapped on the green there on Q5. Now, Miss Green became a global star when she played Bond's backstabbing love interest in Casino Royale. No Oscar, but she did win a BAFTA for it. That's just as good. Q6, what does the letter E stand for in the food additives known as E numbers, emulsifier, Europe, enzyme? What does that E stand for in E numbers? Well, I honestly thought it stood for evil, but Leave voters would say they are one and the same. We're one of its number, but not for long. It's Europe. Europe, wow, savagery, pure and utter savagery right here on Q6, just 547 players left in the game. That was a brutal one, that was grim. Now these artificial additives may have passed the EU's test, but it still is best to avoid them where you can, guys, seriously. All right. 5.47 left in the game. Guys, I have a question for you. Now, be polite. What is the best thing to come out of France? Is it brie, cabernet, baguettes? Why is so much food coming to my mind? The best thing to come out of France? Let me know in the chat. All right, on to Q7, which was not a real class of US submarine. Shark, albacore, narwhal. Not a real class of US submarine, shark, albacore, or narwhal. All right, children, it's time for submarine class. Now, who do we all want as our classmates today? What? No one calling for shark? Shark is your answer. 281 of you killed that question right there. It's funny, the Navy avoided using shark as a class. Instead, they'll send an albacore after you. Oh, so intimidating. Q8. Which of these books is not written by children's author David Walliams? Awful Auntie, Superworm, Ratburger. All titles that would have traumatized me as a kid. Which one not written by David Walliams? He was half of Little Britain and now he's writing books for them. He's chuckled out 12 of them, but he didn't write Superworm. Superworm is your winning answer. 200 of you are worming your way to that win. Written by Julia Donaldson, it's the tale of a worm who is captured by a wicked wizard lizard. Sorry guys, it's only for ages four to eight. You're out of luck there. Q9, which of these players has scored more than one goal in an FA Cup final? Michael Owen, Alan Shearer, Jimmy Floyd, Hasselbank. Hasselbank. Owen Shearer Hasselbank. He scored two goals in the last five minutes, bringing the house down and the trophy back to Merseyside. It's the little speedster himself. It's Michael Owen. Of course, 86 of you got the goal here on Q9. Now, Shearer scored 260 goals in his Premier League career, but never got one in an FA Cup. All right, there's still time, Alan. Still time even though you're retired. Q10, which of these world leaders was the shortest Napoleon? David Ben-Gurion, Yasser Arafat. Who was the shortest? Napoleon, David Ben-Gurion, Yasser Arafat. Guess which one of these guys has a complex named after him? Ah, you already know that part, but did you know the shortest is David ben Gurian for the win here. 22 of you standing tall in the game. Now, whatever we know about Napoleon, he wasn't a five-footer like a former Israeli leader, DBG. He was the shorty of the group. Now, we want to send our best wishes out to JK Rowling, who is doing just fine, despite what several of you in the chat are saying. She is doing great. It's our penultimate round, Q11. Which of these buildings was not designed by the architect? Sahar Hadid, London Aquatic Center, Riverside Museum, Glasgow, the Deep Hull. Not designed by Zahar Hadid. 
The aquarium is far too edgy for the queen of the curve. A geological metaphor rising out of the ground sounds pretty deep and it has the name to match. It's the deep hull. Nine of you are digging deep now, my HQ pies. And we are moving on to the final round. Here we go. It's Q12, the toughest question of the game. $750 up for grabs, just nine players left. Who's gonna take home that win? Q12, which of these did not originate in a YMCA? Father's Day, Jingle Bell Song, Volleyball. Did not originate in a YMCA. Which of these did not? The YMCA can be a real haven for kids who need a place to escape or stay, but it's also got a rich history in the UK and abroad. It's indeed the place where two of these things were invented. One is volleyball, the other is Father's Day, meaning jingle bells for the win. And we have five winners, my lovelies. <laughs> Congratulations to our five winners in today's game. Each of you taking home 150 big ones. We have Eun Bong, we've got Dan Doglio, we've got Alex Selby B. All of you guys should be smiling hard right now and Yoon Bong certainly is in his avatar. So what are you guys gonna do with the cash? You could take a trip to Arkansas in your ruby slippers, maybe buy a rat burger, the book, or the meal, or visit those sharks in the deep. Make sure you're outside of the tank though. Well done, HQT Pies. A beautiful design from start to finish. Dress me up in your smarts. I'm Sharon Carpenter and it's been a pleasure and a treat. Give me a follow on the socials right here and tell me about your favorite fashion designers. I wanna know, hit me on Twitter and let me know. Well, that's a wrap on this show. We are back at 9 p.m. for the final bow of the day. So don't loosen that bow tie just yet. I'll see you back here in a few hours. All right, bye guys. Woo!